often the stories that need told the most are the most difficult ones to tell. Hey, fellas. Melvin Desmukes. I'm with United Security. I'm going to that grocery store across the street. I come bearing gifts. Oh, thank you. That's nice boys. Hey, all things considered, this is pretty good. Thank you. I don't have my usual appliances. Mm. I ain't got any sugar. I don't push it, man. Detroit tells the true story of what happened at the Algiers Motel in Detroit during the race riots of 1967. It's directed by Catherine Bigelow. You've got John Boyega in there, Will Poulter, many others doing their part in what is a very tricky story to tell. How do they handle it? Well, here's five things you might want to know about Detroit. I guess I'll start by saying this. Uh, this movie is powerful. There's no doubt about it. And there are several reasons I think there's a real impact to this movie. Uh, I'll start with this. One of them, I think, is Catherine Bigelow's ability to handle tension. And when I say handle tension, I mean amp up tension. This is some of the most intense movie watching I've had in a long time, probably since, I don't know, like Zero Dark Thirty or The Hurt Locker or some other Catherine Bigelow movie. My point is she really gets how to do it and she does it with stillness. She does it in those quiet moments during the tension. She realizes that quiet and stillness is what really builds the emotion and tension that's going on. And it's not setting up for a jump scare, which a lot of horror movies do. It's allowing us to live in this awful, tragic space with these people in a way. It, the quietness almost makes it more unrelenting. It's pretty impressive work by her. I should say it almost feels like a horror movie in many regards. And in fact, it was. this is a horror story. What happened here? So she honors that in that way. And I think you're going to come away very, very tense throughout, especially the center of this film. Of course, the other thing that adds to that is these performances. They're absolutely stunning and incredible. From top to bottom, really, I didn't see a bad performance in this film. Some of them were better than others. In fact, I'd really like to specifically bring to attention Algie Smith. I apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I've never heard it pronounced, uh, but it looks like Algie Smith. He plays Larry Cleveland, who is an up-and-coming singer in kind of the Motown scene and kind of what he goes through during that night with the riots, what happens at the Algiers. Man, is he good in this. Uh, First of all, dude can sing. Second of all, dude can act. I was really impressed by his performance specifically. Amongst all these incredible performances, his is the one that stands out to me. The other thing that I really liked about this movie, uh, before we start getting into some negatives... Uh, The story, it's just so important to tell. I've said it again and again and again. This is why storytelling exists in the true story sense. To bring these aspects of true life events to the forefront so that we can confront them. It's painful, it's ugly, it's awful, but we have to deal with it. Why? Because it's who we are. You may think who we were, but it's also who we are. And that's the the other important thing, is to connect this movie and what's happening there, to how that informs where we live today. Sure, it was half a century ago. It was 50 years ago. But today we see not only echoes, but very strong echoes of some of the things that are happening in that time. It allows us to confront those things in a way that I think is important and valuable to ourselves and to those around us. Now, having said that, Bigelow's taking some heat on this one, and you know what? I can kind of see it. Let's go ahead and give this one a yellow as we kind of talk about the controversies with race that involved in this movie. Now, I don't have a lot that I can address, honestly, because it's not my perspective. Uh, It is not something that I have ever gone through. It is not something that I could ever understand. So please understand that. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I can say and what really has value to what I say in this regard. Other than to say, the movie didn't feel inauthentic to me. It didn't feel unreal to me. The characters felt well drawn. I can see some of the perspective of having a a white director or, you know, white writers or white producers tell this black story. Um, But from what I can see, again, from my limited perspective, they do it fairly well. There is one way 
that I think it limits the perspective and limits the impact that this movie can have, and we'll get into that here in a second. But I will say, overall, I can see where the controversies are coming from, even though I didn't feel them deeply myself. So let's get into how that does impact the movie for me. I didn't think it felt manufactured, as some are saying. I think it just felt too broad. I felt like Catherine Bigelow tried to go too wide with this story, instead of really focusing in on a human story, on maybe Larry Cleveland's story, and just telling us that story to its best ability, really letting us empathize with him and what he's going through. I almost felt like Catherine wanted this to be more of a OJ made in America kind of thing, where it really broadened out and told you all of the you know perspective of the riots. And, and I just don't think that was necessary here. It's too broad. Focus in on this neighborhood. Let us know who these people are. Focus in on Larry Cleveland. Let us know who he is. Even the title itself, Detroit, is too big. The title should have been The Algiers or The Algiers Hotel or something like that that really narrows down what this is about. Because I'm going to be honest, when the movie is in the hotel is when it is working. But that stuff before and after is not needed contextually. We just need to live in that moment with these people. If you want to have a little addendum about what happened at the trial, or if you want to start off with just some general context about the riots, we just don't need to. There's too much buildup and too much end. It's all the meats right there in the center. And I think if there had been some more focus there, it could have told a more intimate and real story about these people and honored it, I think, even more than it already does. <clears throat> Overall, though, Detroit is a really powerful film. Uh, because it doesn't get the, that specific enough for me, though, that does bring it down to a B. Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. We'll get to the Best Ever Challenge here in a bit. Before we do, though, let's connect further. Hit me up on Twitter, at Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R. Uh, you can also listen to the podcast. It's called Sift Pop, S I F T P O P, uh, and you can subscribe um, wherever you do your podcast thing there. Uh, also, if you want to subscribe at YouTube, that'd be awesome. Leave comments, have fun. Let's all hang out here at YouTube, and uh, it'll be a good thing. We'll chat movies. Uh, so, those are some ways to connect. Also, you can support the channel as well. Patreon.com slash your movie friend. Thank you to all who are already supporting. I think $3 a month is where it starts. Uh, some pretty fun perks there. You might want to go check those out even if you're not thinking about supporting. And that's patreon.com slash your movie friend. All right, on to the best ever challenge where you name the best movie ever in a particular category. Also try to identify my choice. Uh, let's go with the best movie ever set in Detroit. There's been some good ones. A lot of good ones. I uh, am going to have to go with the one that appropriately enough is named after a car. Because, you know, it's the Motor City. Take a guess at mine in the comments, and you can leave your choice there as well. As always, I'll give you a few extra seconds to hit subscribe so you never miss a video. Just click my face. Click my face! I don't know.